It's 95.5 KLOS and 955KLOS.com. Stu with you and my special in-studio guest, none other than the great Jack Russell of Jack Russell's Great White. There you go. And I'm, uh, I'm handling the duties today. Yes, you are. You're handling it. Thanks. Well, uh, hey. <laughs> my hands start handling something else, man. It's good to see you, man. And uh, congr- for cr- one, first of all, thanks for not dying on us. My God, you scared the hell out of everybody. You know, um, I have to attribute that really to my wife, Heather. I mean, she's a nurse, thank God. And um, she came out here initially to uh, take care of my mom. And when I was on the road, uh-huh. and my mom was really sick. And um, there was, then there was a time where I got injured. She was taking care of both of us. And my mom had to go into a home, and all this stuff started happening to me. And, you know, she ended up, you know, spending her life savings and, you know, um, coming home from work at, you know, hospice and then, you know, taking care of me, changing my colostomy bag, pulling me up out of a wheelchair, washing me, feeding me, you know, teaching me how to walk again. You, I mean, did you, you had to just be so completely freaked out. I mean, did you think you were going to pull out? You know, dude, I, I was gone at one point. I didn't even realize what was going on around me, you know. I mean, I was in a coma at one point in the hospital for five days with sepsis from a perforated bowel, you know, a really bad infection, and they thought, they thought I was going to die. And the frustrating thing that killed me the most was not one guy in my band called to say, hey, is he dead? Nothing. Uh, Nothing. Well, so that was the worst part of it all. Well, that, no and and that's, that leads into, into this business uh, that there's two great whites out there right now, which is kind of unthinkable, just given the fact that you guys well whether, there's one and then there's well a, there's, there's a fake one yeah right okay there's well, my group and then there's the ones trying to be yeah a great way you guys weathered so much stuff over the years i mean it's kind of surprising that it's horrible at this point you know there's the this this friction well you know here's the deal you know i, I cost them some money you know thousands of dollars and uh, i made them a little bit embarrassed and you know, nothing that um, anybody else in the band hadn't done at some point. I mean, to a degree, everybody caused a bad embarrassment and money at some point. You know, I'm not going to get into particulars because I don't want to do that. But, I mean, suffice to say, we've all had our issues over the years, you know. Yeah. I was sober for eight years. Um, some of the guys weren't. And then now that they got sober before I did, I guess I'm ostracized because of that, yeah. you know. Well, do you think that – can you see – uh, a time down the road where you guys might actually reconcile is that like <laughs> complete impossibility i mean if van halen get back together with david lee roth i think you would think almost anything is possible uh, you know what no maybe you can't see it now no if, if i can't see it, i'd no i would never do that not after what they've done to me yeah. they're not my friends they haven't been for a long time apparently i thought they were that was that devastated me when that happened to me I was devastated, man. These guys are my family, you know. We've been through everything together. Yeah. And then when I'm in the hospital and, and my wife's sitting there, she goes, I'm all, hey, is the band called? She's like, no. I'm like, oh, man. You know, she saw me crying. She's like, what's the matter? I go, you know, I just, where are my friends at, you know? Well, well, let's shift gears because you got a lot of friends and you're seeing a lot of them. you got a full dance card right now. Yeah, I know, you know, and that's the one thing that makes you feel okay. It's like, you know, the hell of those guys, you know, it's all about the fans. And I go back on stage, and there's so many people coming out, out of the woodwork and, and, you know, realizing, yeah, you are the singer Great White, Jack, yeah. right? Jack, Jack Russell is Great White. You know what I mean? And that's the way I look at it, man. I mean, any band in the world, you change the singer, you change the sound of the band. You can't call what they're doing now Great White. It's not. They got a new singer. It's a new sound. The one thing that makes a balance sound consistent right. is the lead singer. You know what I mean? We've changed guitar players over the years. We've changed drummers. We've changed you bass guys players. Have changed it, man, nobody you look at the cared. List of folks that have yeah, been nobody that cared, band. man. Yeah. You know, I mean, you never see anybody out there screaming, "Where's Mark Kendall?" or "Where's Michael Lardy?" I mean, "Where's Audie <laughs> Desbro?" Most people don't know their names. You know what I mean? Uh, you've got a like I said, you've got a full dance card yeah, yeah. coming up, and uh, I don't want uh, I don't want too much time to go by before we. Get into the let's do it. Get, get into the calendar of events for and and I need I need notes because there's so much going on. Yeah. May third Canyon Club, May fourth Coach House, then Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Uh, May twelfth at the Brixton. Then in June you head out with uh, Faster Pussycat, Bullet Boys, uh, 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 L- Lillian uh, Axe, and Pretty Boy Floyd, and Pretty Boy Floyd. Is that, yeah, yeah, and Lillian Axe. And then in August that bill comes and plays. Uh, Right before uh, the Sunset Strip Music Festival. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So, dude, you're like, there's no, there's no, there's no break for you. 
No, no, no. You know what? It's great. It's great. This is a lot of fun. We actually have a couple other shows. You might be throwing there a couple festivals um, in that in that downtime. Um, but no, it's been great. It's been great. The show's been packed. You know, I mean, the band is so fantastic. I mean, these guys are amazing. Um, my one guitarist, Robbie Lochter, is a total virtuoso, as is Matt, Matthew Johnson, who's played with the band before. Um, but together, they're like this unstoppable thing. We can do some stuff now that Great White was never able to do, but still in keeping with what Great White is, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but, you know, just doing things a little bit differently, trading off leads, doing harmonies, um, just spicing it up a lot, you know. And Derek Pontier on drums, who played with Great White before, you know, for quite a number of years. And a kid named Dario Satius on, on bass, who's uh, frankly one of the best bass players I've ever seen. And I've been in this business for a long, long, long time. And there's not much I haven't seen. You know, I played with Vinnie Caliuto, you know, Tony Levin, um, Tim Boger, Myron Grombacher, to name a few. And these guys are, you know, right up there with these. They're right up there with them. Did you come from a musical family? Yeah, I was raised by uh, um, five uh, black folks from Kentucky. Oh, really? Because <laughs> that that's not what's up online at all. <laughs> no, you know what? Honest to God, I ha my my family has no musical background. My mom and dad they couldn't carry tune in a briefcase. Uh -huh. um, oddly enough, though, my grandmother, my mom's side, was said to have had a record deal off to her but she was a little uh paranoid schizophrenic she was agoraphobic she was afraid to leave the house oh, wow. so she turned it down i have never heard her sing but i heard she had a beautiful voice so maybe that where it's, that's where it came from hmm. you know what I mean? they br did you did you come up in uh, south bay no actually initially i was raised in pico rivera and whittier uh -huh. and then i moved to south bay you know when the band kind of started to do uh to do well we all kind of live down there, and I'm back down there now, and uh, I bought a really big uh, sport fisher, and my wife and I both live on it. It's great. Yeah. You know? And I get bored to start the house up and go shark fishing. The obvious answer to the question, if you didn't sing, that's what you'd be doing. That's Absolutely, That's got to yeah. be just as equal a passion for you. Yet. Well, not as equal. I mean, uh, if I had a list of three most important things in my life, my wife, my music, and fishing, in that order. Hmm. That never used to be that way. You should be always used to be the band first, you know? And this is the first time in my life I have felt that my wife's a better, bigger priority, you know, so how odd is that? You know? That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I got to ask you, um, you know, after, it's almost been 10 years, and it's hard to believe that, but after uh, after what happened in Rhode Island, you it must have been, I can't imagine, I, I can't, uh, the you know, this kind of soul searching and what you had to go through as a person to try to figure out, you know, if you even thought it was right for you to get back on a stage or sing ever again. I mean, did you... Did you go through that? What, what did, uh, and 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 how did you come back to the uh, decision to, you know, that, that it was the right move to you get know, back on a stage? The only reason that we did that was because we were doing a benefit tour. And I thought, okay, well, the only reason I can get back on stage here again is, is I can do something that is as close to being altruistic as you're going to get, you know. Right. And we tried to help some people, you know. And it wasn't out of guilt, it was just out of these were our friends and, and we want to help them out, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, we felt plenty of guilt, you know. I, I cried for months and I still do. I'm still going to therapy. Matter of fact, I have a therapy session tomorrow about it, you know. Um, and it's just the guilt of people came there to see me sing and their lives were ended or horribly changed, you know, by being injured or disfigured. And, and, I mean, that's something you never get over, you know, and I can never say the right thing about it to make people feel okay, you know. I always say something and somebody goes, oh, well, I can't believe you said that. So I really try not to talk about it too much anymore. You I know? understand that, sure. Yeah, but okay. that's, yeah, that's where that's at. Uh, so you've got a Facebook account up and there's a folder called uh, Jack Russell Through the Years. And uh, have you seen this? I've seen some of them. Yeah, there's just so many out there that are, uh, you know, all my, all my baby pictures and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, your baby pictures, yeah, yeah, yeah. little uh, elementary school, and then uh, <laughs> uh, Jack, you know, on stage yeah, uh, as funny. a Those very... Those are picture of me when I was singing in Dante Fox. As a very young man in Dante Fox. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that's, uh, you know, you, you might see a couple here and there, but uh, that, a whole folder 
uh, is uh, is something special that's yeah, uh, uh, unusual. Well, hey, I want to thank you for coming down. It's great to see yeah, you. Man, it's you great too, to, to on, see you on stage again. Thank you. Uh, if you uh, the dates again, May third, Canyon Club. May fourth, Coach House. May twelfth, Brixton. If you're lucky enough to get into Fantasy Camp, uh, Jack will uh, maybe show you a trick or two. Yeah.